Hi, I'm Ray Gordon. Welcome to my YouTube channel. This is a brief stock market video. Yeah, I had a really good week, although Friday I cashed out a little early. I was long the spy. As you all, well, the 40 people or whatever that watch these videos know, when a stock has moved in an extreme manner, I bet on the reversal. There's a reason I do that, which I might or might not share. In fact, it's the only criteria I have for betting. And basically, I take a falling knife, I grab it, and I stab the bears with it, ideally. Meaning, I get you grab the falling knife, you catch it at the bottom, you take that knife, and you stab the bears with it, and then the bulls go on. Or vice versa. So, um, when I say I'm long or short the market, that means I am right now. As for when to sell or when I might flip, I change direction all the time. I had to bring this up because, well... Yesterday, I actually had given out this stock on Wednesday to somebody I didn't know if they owned it or not, and I wanted to make sure they knew that I had already gotten out of it and I had no way to contact them, so that's what that came up. I may start, I don't know. I don't care if people bet what I do. If, you, if you're betting on me, that's fine. If you win with my picks, I don't even, I mean, I'd love a donation or something, but I don't ask for one. Because if you're crazy enough to bet my picks, you deserve everything you win, and if the results are bad, well, that's what happens. In fact, if you bet on me and you lose, I'm like, yeah, you can lose a bet. Gee, I've lost many bets. In fact, before this run that I've been on, and it's been, it's starting to look like an epic run, um, I was down 100 bucks. I had $89 left. I had a couple of calls, and I had puts, right? It was up at like 418. I thought it was going to turn at 410. So, um, but it didn't. But luckily, what I do is I tend to ration my bankroll so that I'm always in, or at least with a position. Because you know, at some point, it's not going to a million, it's not going to zero. So, yeah, I center my trading around those inflection points. And everybody else does that. Yeah, okay, fine. How many squares are on a chessboard? Well, 64, but no. There's like, I think they said 228. Well, when you deal with patterns, okay, 9-day moving average, 20-day moving average, 1,000-day moving average, 100-day moving average, 50-day moving average, which do you use? It's like playing quicks. All the lines, are, there's like 85 lines moving in different directions. That's why Power Base, well, Bacon X now, is useful because I can ask all these questions. Is the 18-day moving average more accurate than the 7-day moving average? And what's it more accurate for? Even if I know when to get into a stock, when do you get out? You see, you have to know all of this. This is moving parts. Now, ideally, they wouldn't even allow this betting because, well, I like one guy I said, I have 128000 I need to learn how to invest in the stock market. Oh, that's nice. I'm a 56-year-old former math prodigy whose father taught him how to handicap when he was seven who's been doing nothing but developing artificial intelligence methods to computerize my handicapping ability. I spent hours studying stuff, designing profitable methods, beaten every game I've ever played when I bet. I've won for, let's see, since 1974. That's 48 years I've been a winning gambler. Yeah, not two or three. No, I've never gotten rich, and I've never gone broke because of it. So... You know, again, look at the downside. Every guy you can point at who's won more money than me has usually had a much more negative experience than me. That's my mother's training. Keep gambling is secondary. Make your life something else. That's work-life balance, but it's very expensive when you have a profitable ROI. So anyhow, Friday I'm looking at it, and I knew it could go all the way up, but you see, I didn't care. Money not won is not the same as money lost, okay? That I didn't win from 401 to 4. I got in at 392. I'm like, when do you get out? It's some, I'm asking, am I the pig? Yeah, well, everybody else is the pig now. When everybody else is the pig, that's when I go short. So I took a 398 put for Wednesday, if anybody cares. Um, it might be wrong, and here's the deal. If it goes to 408 or 410, you just come back with the 405. When you're betting on market reversals, it's a little different, but there are huge advantages to doing this. It's anticipatory. So you've got to be able to risk it. And they say, well, cut your bet on the option. Make a smaller bet. You can't do that because then theta will kill you. I don't want to bet on something 396 going to 400 in the overnight every night. I want to make money if it goes up 50 cents in the overnight. To do that, you have to make a bigger bet with no theta. But no theta is another problem because you only have one day left, and if it moves against you, you're going to get crushed. I like to go five, seven, ten days out. Why? 
Because on those, I mean, if you look at the range on even those options, it's big enough. 60, 80 percent in a day? I don't need a three bagger. I don't want a three bagger. So when I took my profits, took my weekend, and actually, well, I'm going to do another video about that. But um, that's coming up soon. But I, I just, I, I made a profit yesterday early. I took, actually, I made a profit in the overnight Thursday. I made a profit Friday. I took the profit. It was like 10, 11 o'clock, and that was it. And, you, and a lot of traders know this. Like, hanging on too long on a Friday can really ruin your week. Also, if I'm that good, I can win the money Monday. I can win it Tuesday. It, uh, it, well, you missed a winning bet. Every bet I miss is a winning bet these days. Yeah. I'm turning into, well, somebody I read about years ago. See, once you start winning, the money just piles up. And it keeps piling up. That's why traders are either billionaires, millionaires, or broke. It's not that trading is bad. It's just that if you win at it, you're not staying broke. See Keith Gill. There are a lot of people who become millionaires overnight trading the spy. I don't know many who become millionaires overnight betting sports, which is why I don't give a fuck about sports. I'm doing power base now. I make my bets once a day. I check the square and watch the games anymore. I just don't care. I do have an NFL method that's kicking ass weeks one to five, though, where you treat the season as a continuation of last year. So I'll be doing that in September. And, yeah, all the people who think they can outsmart Vegas when it comes to adjusting the ratings, you can't. Let them do it. Why, why should I adjust my power ratings from year to year when I know Vegas is going to do my work for me and do it better than me? No one thing will make you a winner. The absence of error and constantly adding small advantages like Steinitz said in a chess game might make you a winner, but Aliekin's approach of the rapid accumulation of large advantages is what you really want to go. And large advantages are what, like in the NFL or the spot. One such large advantage is when I see a little, that could be a short squeeze which will unwind. Whatever it is, it will probably unwind. If not, it'll find a new bottom, it'll find new support, and then the whole thing I do will start over again. And when you're playing options and you're only losing $100 if it goes to zero, you put up $100 at like 405. Well, actually, what I did was I got out. I was long. At some point, it got to like 405, and this was the last time it got there. And it dropped to like 392 or something. But the other day, I then got back in at 392, and then boom, 394, boom, 398. Then it opens 400 yesterday. If that's not a setup, I was just worried because I'm like, it can't be that easy. So I took my, I tried twice. I actually tried to take the call, but it just didn't launch until I got out. And I, I was stopped out because I have a cash account. And I can only do so many day trades. By the way, on the PDT roll, that's what you do. If you can't take $1,000, put it in a cash account, make $20, $50 trades a day, and get to $25,000, what makes you think you're going to win? Because if you can't, that's a simple task for a professional gambler, okay? So, anyhow, for those who care, I took a put over the weekend, which means you already know my position. I mean, I'm already down on it, so I don't care. I might add to it if the price moves. I have a whole set of rules. It is so complicated that I can't explain it, not that I explain anything. I can't even share it, not that I would. But and the reason I don't share it is because if you learn half my method, you'll get crushed. Even if I taught everything I do to people, you'd still get crushed. This is like video games. Quick, It's like video games, chess, poker, and everything all wrapped into one. You better be good at all of it. Math. And you need to be matching me like that guy. Yeah, you had a job. You were the one who didn't hire me. You own an investment property. You were the one who wouldn't rent to me. And now you want me to tell you how to beat the stock market rather than just take your money, buy your home, sleep with your wife, or whatever. That's the world that we live in. So this is why I study the market. It's because it's war. It's you putting up your life savings against my hundred dollars. Yeah, play poker in that situation against a pro with a hundred dollars and you're a whale with a hundred thousand and see walks away with the money. Look, I don't I didn't set up this system. The fact that idiots with you know with money come in and say, I'm better at you math than you are, and they want to put up all their money behind that big mouth, hey, go right ahead. It's very easy for me to sit here and go, oops, mistake, click, trade, boom, sell. I mean, it's, it's clockwork. I don't, even, I don't even check the markets. In. I don't even have to write my software, though I am going to because I want to do a lot more research with it. And I don't think people understand the spy is American stupidity in a nutshell. It's just, it's arrogance. It's confidently stupid. I mean, how many people were talking about the bear market? Oh, why am I short the spy? Let's get to that. 
Yeah, if you're, you're still hanging around, we're 10 minutes into this video and I finally get to it. Let's see who's still watching. You know, a like would be nice, some money would be nice. Why don't you get me some viewers? Oh, no, that's right. You don't want anything. You just want freebies. Yeah, sure. You don't think those slick advertised videos of people who claim to win money yet are asking for yours are good? Go ahead. I love it when my opponents mess up. It's beautiful. But why am I short this spy? Okay. Snap is ending. The We're going off a financial cliff. Evictions are up. That's going to lead to homelessness and massive bankruptcy. The end of SNAP is really going to kill the economy. Inflation won't be the problem, but it never is. Yeah, we didn't have inflation in the Great Depression. We had 10% deflation, which is far worse than inflation, by the way. Um, I don't care because everybody's going broke because you're all idiots. You're all wrong now because you hear a bull market there because there's a rally. Guess what? It's time to go short. Now, I might be wrong now, but I'm not going to be wrong all week. And if I am all, all week, I'll bring twice as much money next week. There's a name for the system I use. It's considered one of the worst betting systems in the world. That's Martingale. That's where you double up after all. It's modified Martingale, which in a game of chance will destroy you, but in a correlated game of skill, we're talking about something different. Can I have a PhD for that revelation, please? No, I can't. But what I can do is play in the market, steal everybody's money or whatever, and swipe it and get rich. Kind of like that guy I read about did. So anyhow, I'm not saying the market will go down. I have no fucking idea what the market will do. What I am saying is the market is more likely to go down than up from here. It might go up first. But I buy one put just in case it goes down. That's actually the backup bet. I wouldn't mind if it went to 408 because that's a, the bank just gets stronger every time it loses. That's my one criteria. If I make a bet and it loses, I never have to sell it because I always have a stronger bet. You know that takes the brain work out of it? Not every bet gets stronger when it loses. Some bets actually get weaker. You do not want a bet like that. See, you're not playing a game of skill. You're playing a game of chance with elements of skill. And you're being fooled into thinking it's a game of skill. You don't treat it like a game of skill. If you do, you will get crushed. Treat it like the game of chance that it is with the elements of skill. You're actually betting on the tote board, which, by the way, as somebody who was taught horse racing at seven, um, I have like an inner knowledge of this because of my dad again, who trained me to win like this, by the way. Not every year, and I don't win fortunes, but I don't lose. Not the way most people do. Even in my worst years, nothing. I mean, you spend more on coffee than I've probably ever lost in a year if you're an average coffee drinker, okay? That, what's my worst year? I think minus 1,500, minus 3,000 maybe. My best year, I couldn't even count it. I was too busy spending it, and it wasn't, well. Uh, let's just say thank you for the uh, taxation uh, issues of the 1980s that no longer exist. It used to be if you won money at the track, nobody knew, or you just didn't have to. You only had to report like stuff there. Now everything's digital, so every time I win is documented. So I should publish my figures, although it's a little personal, and I don't always win. See, again, it's professional in my approach. But if I'm about to hit a jackpot a month from now, again, ROI doesn't mean shit. If you think ROI is great as a research tool, but in betting, it just doesn't matter because if you hit it, I came within four points of winning $1 million on the Fantasy Super Bowl. I came within eight points of winning it last year, and next year, I'm going after it again. It cost me about $200 to bet it. So anyhow, I'm short to spy because I think the economy is going to crash due to the end of SNAP and a number of other problems like inflation, debt service, and I just don't think we're done with the pain yet. This sounds more than anything like the bullshit bull rally that's going to get killed. So I'm hunkering down and I'm nibbling with some puts. And I know it might take a little time to turn this steamboat, but I'm going to start now. You know, I like to wait, you know, and say, okay, let it go higher. But I already did that from 401. When's it going to turn? It started stalling late Friday, but I don't know. Often also when you see a rise like that on Friday, whoever was setting it up for the drop, nails you on Monday and often knows that somebody like me is looking for the drop on Monday so they fake you out Monday and then I come in Tuesday. You know that game where you have to like put the bat up and whoever gets the hand last there wins? It's a lot like that. It's also like no anti-poker. You can fold any hand that you don't think is strong enough. So I would say if stock market trading were poker, I won't even play a hand unless I have four of a kind or better. Most people will play if they have a full house of any kind. I would say if you hold free, I don't know what the pros do. I'm sure there's a correct hand to do it, but 
Um, I would guess three. I, a king high full house would do it. Also, a king high full house cannot be beaten because unless you have wild cards, because there are only two aces in the deck. Anyhow, I'm Ray Gordon. I am signing off for now, and I will catch you later. Bye bye.